and welcome to uh, a first for me uh, in what I hope to be uh, an interesting series. So um, if you guys can, I'd be pretty interested in uh, getting some of your guys' feedback um, on the, uh, the video. It's going to be a, a strategy guide essentially for uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol's Guardians of the Galaxy affiliation on uh, just general strategy, uh, turn zero, turn one play. Uh, things like that. Um, starting off with uh, what I believe to be Guardians of the Galaxy's number one crisis. Uh, I, I think that's going to be the thing that you're going to find in every Guardians of the Galaxy list. And I believe it's it's honestly a, a crisis that they do better than any other affiliation in the game. And they just have, frankly, at this point, uh, a pretty unfair advantage on, right? So... Uh, for for those of you that are that are kind of new to the game or uh, that that aren't really aware, I think one of the things that you really want to look for when you're building a squad is you know what do I do extremely well or what do I do that's better than anybody else, right? There's the uh, and how do I build my roster around leveraging that advantage for myself? So Malekith, uh Cabal has the the Red Skull Mystique team at 15. Uh, and it has some corresponding crises that just makes them uh, extremely dominant and hard to play against. There is uh, the Senator's play with uh, Mystique Brotherhood uh, that is uh, an extremely dominant team. And then you've got, uh, you know, Mutant Madmen, uh, Deadly Meteors, and some of the other pay-to-flip plays for uh, X-Men teams where they're just extraordinarily strong, right? So... There, there are others. Uh, for example, I think Defenders has a, depending on how you've built your team, can have some extraordinary game on, on Gamma, uh, regardless of the threat level. So what you're really trying to do is, you know, you're trying to find those crises and those, those team combinations uh, on how to really leverage that thing. And so, like I said, I, I think Guardians' real strength lies in Demons Downtown, and, and that's due to a couple of ways that the team is kind of built. Uh, how the crisis is built and how, again, like it all just kind of works together into the whole entire uh, game plan for Guardians. So uh, for the purposes of uh, this video, we're just uh, playing at 19 um, and as if uh, Guardians have won priority. So we're going to be going up against a shield team that I've kind of just haphazardly thrown together at 19. I've given them a board edge that I feel like they would uh, choose. It gives them this uh, nice piece of terrain back here with that truck that they're going to have some cover on. Uh, and it also, admittedly, allows me to kind of line up some of the things that I want to show you guys uh, from the uh, the turn zero perspective and setting up into turn one. So um, we just had a new model release in Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Ghost Rider. A lot of people are wondering, should they just... Uh, mash him into every roster and every lineup. Uh, I've been pretty adamant in saying that no, I, I don't think you do. And you know, it might be a situation where you say, well, it's at 19 and it's on demons and uh, you know, he's immune to incinerate and all this other stuff. But I don't actually think that's Guardian's uh, strongest roster uh, possible at 19 on this uh, particular crisis. So, all that stuff being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my turn zero roster selection. Um, if you're new to TTS, typically if you're going up against an opponent, you're going to go ahead and slap that down, okay? So, you're going to basically conceal your roster. You'll notice uh, this is basically what it looks like on the, uh, the opponent's side, right? So, normally I wouldn't be able to see that. Um, anyhow... I think the absolute best roster here is going to be Star-Lord, Rocket Groot, uh, Bill, Maya Man, Ghost Rider. Um, he's in a lot of Guardians roster. He's just my only splash left. Uh, and then Nebula. One of the things that I like to do when I'm selecting things in a TTS roster, or even like if I'm playing in real life, is I, I like to kind of start out with my leader on one end. And then go with kind of like lower to higher threat models and then typically 
just kind of like a damage model, like a nebula on the end. She always just ends up on the outside end for me because she's kind of an afterthought, right? So, um, tactics cards, I think, honestly, if you're going to be playing in any roster, anywhere, anymore, I feel like you really have to have Brace. Uh, might be a conversation for another time uh, as to why I think it should be in every roster, but I think it provides extraordinary value. Uh, with the drop of uh, Follow Me, we've got Sacrifice that I'm going to be putting in here. And from there, when it comes down to tactics card selection, I kind of always want to be focusing on, you know, what do I think is like most important or like next, right? So I think Deadly Duo is phenomenal. I like deal with the devil with this team combination. And there's a lot of different ways that we can go with this last pick. Uh, and none of them are really all that bad, right? Uh, we Are Groot is going to be great on a condensed crisis like this. Uh, for anybody that didn't notice, we have uh, Demons and Montessi. Uh, I wasn't expecting Montessi to be the one that drops. And honestly, we're not going to be going too far into this video. But uh, we're going to be focusing mostly on the secure play here. Uh, which is something that you can really typically afford to do with Guardians. Uh, even if you have like five extracts out there, you know, because with this setup and this strategy that I'm going to be kind of showing off here on turn zero, it's going to really allow you to probably win the secure side. And so if you're losing the extract parity game by one point, you will have equal it out. And I promise you that there's not really very many or any teams that are going to be able to keep up with you from an attrition or aggression standpoint. Uh, to finish off on this fifth tactics card, however, uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably go with Galaxy's Greatest. Um, I think it's just a phenomenal card, but We Are Groot could be very good on condensed here. Uh, you could make a case for Crew of the Milano in case you wanted to clear one of these incinerates, but uh, to be completely honest with you, I don't think that clearing these incinerates are going to be all that necessary because of the way that we've got our roster construction and the way that we're going to be kind of playing this crisis uh, in and of itself, right? So, um, again, this is a little bit of a, a TTS thing. Obviously, in real life, you're going to, uh, hopefully, if you've got mats and all that stuff, uh, it's going to give you, like, your, your deployment line, and there'll actually be a line kind of drawn out there. If not, you're going to be using your uh, your range three. So, with us having priority, we're going to be going here first. So, in TTS, I've just selected deployment uh, activated. I've kind of spaced out on this. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get that pulled up for you. You can see tactics cards again. We're only going to be playing through uh, turn one and turn zero with this anyhow. So a lot of this stuff's not going to come into effect. So we've got our rosters uh, selected. So I'm going to turn off. I'm going to reveal. I'm going to hit auto activate here. And again, I really do think that this is uh, Guardian's best lineup at 19 on demons uh, obviously 17 is still a very common threat level so all you do is you just take nebula off and then you run star lord rocket groot uh bill and ghost rider there is a another iteration of this uh at 19 uh, that i think that can also be very effective uh to be honest with you the the real kind of most important thing is having Rocket and Groot. Uh, and I, I know maybe some people are like, well, yeah, that's the most important thing for every Guardians roster. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think the most important combination, and if you were to ask me what the, the core for today's Guardians would be, I'd say start with Star-Lord, add Bill, and then go with from there. Uh, Bill is really the motor that makes these guys function. Uh, he's going to be the guy that is going to keep Guardians in games or somewhat within striking range while we have two affiliated models that are likely not scoring any points throughout a game. So, uh, starting off, uh, again, I've got priority, which is why we popped out my secure there. I'm just going to do uh, one of the first and most obvious things on this crisis to get my setup kind of going. And we're just going to pop Groot here in the center. So, uh, and, uh, you know, if we do future videos of this, if this is something that people like, then, well, I'll probably end up talking about this a lot. But I, I, I think one of the biggest advantages that the Rocket and Groot combination kind of bring is that it's almost like you get a, uh, 
it's almost like you get a pass on deployment because I can put Rocket down right next to Groot uh, here to the left. It's not going to surprise anybody, but I am going to get some more information out of what my opponent's going to be doing uh, just based on that, right? Uh, I think the most likely deployment, and typically on your, your turn zero, early on, I think you want to get your most likely things out of the way. Uh, so for me, the most likely thing that I think a, a, a shield player would be doing, uh, especially with this nice piece of terrain that they've got there, is setting up their long-range model, Bucky, to be able to sit this back point and uh, kind of cover down on the center of the board there. Okay? So again, I just go ahead and take my obvious thing, and I plop him down right there. That's not giving away anything to my opponent. It's obvious what my plan is on this because of where I've put Groot already. Plopping down Rocket there doesn't do anything. Uh, I am potentially gaining information here, though. And, you know, with this, if this were a bit of a different crisis, maybe more information. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I think we're going to see just a lot of clumping on a crisis like this. That's fine. Uh, you know, we can go over some more... Uh, we'll just say kind of exotic strategies. This is a lot more about what you can do with this Guardian's affiliation than it is anything else. And this is probably the most standardized look that I've found, uh, besides maybe some things that I like to do on Infinity and Intrusions. But it almost doesn't really matter what your opponent's going to be doing. Um, you know, but we can kind of talk about some things that we could do differently if there were different uh, crises out there. Um, one of the things that I could have done a favor for with this shield team if uh, I was caring to do a little bit better job with roster construction is we could have given them a centerline grab so they could come up here and grab this Montessi book. Uh, but they don't have that, so I think they're going to be in for a pretty rough game. Um, let's go ahead and flank out uh, Spider-Woman for them. Uh, why not, right? And we're just going to try to line up Bill, uh, again, fairly center line. What I really want to try to do with him is I want to get him up to this point here. And maybe if I can get him to where he can be on that cover and contesting the point, that'd be ideal. That's what I'm really wanting to look at here. Um, Either that or worst case scenario, we're going to be down in there so I can get some semblance of cover from this direction. So we're going to be, it doesn't really matter where I set up as long as he can double move into the center point. Um, but he's definitely going to go in the center of the board. I'm not actually giving anything away there. So opponent, we'll just have them go ahead and line up with... Uh, Oh, we'll just say Iron Man. He's got flight, so we'll be able to get over that car. Other things that I like to do with Star Lord uh, in a lot of my matches is to get him lined up a little bit off center. So, if, for example, there was a situation where we had like a C shaped crisis or if there was a flank extract over here, right? He now has, uh, you know, a flight having character in this, in between uh, these two points here. If you've got something directly in the center of the board and then something on a flank, he can actually decide to reach either. Now, your opponent, you know, if they're smart <laughs> uh, or if they're a little bit seasoned, they know that Star-Lord is not going here. There is literally no circumstance in the world... I think where you run up your fairly fragile uh, three-threat leader into the center of the board on this particular crisis. Um, so he is going over here if he's doing anything, or you know he's going to come up into this kind of zone here and just kind of sit off to the side and kind of pick on people a little bit. Um, but the idea of potentially being able to threaten an extract if it were over here is fairly appealing. Uh, because now it's going to force an opponent to, if there was something over there, to kind of have a reaction to it. Uh, fortunately, they've already got Spider-Woman there. But that is just one thing that you can kind of do uh, with Star-Lord. Uh, set him off over there. Now, the real reason that I've got him kind of lined up off-center off 
is because I don't want to slow down any of my other models uh, from what I'm trying to do here within this kind of next turn. Uh, in particular, Ghost Rider or Nebula. Uh, we'll go Howling Commandos. And not the most optimized uh, shield list, so uh, I think I could have done better by them on this, but they're not really my focus here. Alright. So I've kind of screwed up a bit on my deployment, and you guys will kind of hopefully be able to pick on me a bit for that. But what we're really trying to do here is just set up on this turn zero. This is all still very possible with where I've got Ghost Rider at. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I'm deleting that. And we're getting him right where I would normally want him. Again, Bill's T0 here, where he's at, doesn't matter. He's literally not doing anything this round other than going up to the center of the board when I feel it's relatively safe for him to do so. Okay. I think it's going to be a similar thing for the Grunts here, because if they are... If there is going to be anything resembling a turn one, uh, you know, extract grab, it's going to be from the grunts uh, because they can control where that extract does get dropped. So similarly to how Bill was deployed, it doesn't really matter where they go as long as they can reach that center in two moves. And they certainly can uh, from just that position there. So as a Guardians player, you typically want to try to recognize... Uh, where that stuff is going to be coming from. And one of the ways that you can react to some of those models is by countering it with a Nebula. Uh, or, if you're running like a Cosmic Ghost Rider, he's sort of like a obviously superior version to her. But you want to counter those, uh, those Extract Grabbers. And so the reason why I was really big about setting up Star-Lord where he is, is over here is because... That being a size 2, I don't want to have anything slow Nebula down, right? I want to have her have a, a free line, and I want her to be the one that is not running into any cover. Not necessarily Star-Lord. Uh, because if I've got Star-Lord back here and he's shooting at people with cover, whatever, right? On the flip side of things is, you know, I also have the option to, to kind of move back here. Or I can come up a little bit closer if I want to start popping off on some people and get some cover for myself, right? So there's your, your turn zero setup. Um, get uh, Black Widow out for these folks. Uh, for Guardians. So TTS thing. You want to turn this off. All right. Get your power phase going. Uh, winging it with Guardians. There There is, in my opinion, a bit of an art and a science to it. Uh, and it requires a little bit of reps to kind of know uh, where you want these things. But... Uh, part of the benefit of these kind of little strategy videos is that, um, especially for something like this, which is going to have a, a standardized strategy, I think this is really an optimized play for Guardian. Uh, obviously, there's potential for some counter to it. But what you want to do is, and what you can do, is you can throw your Wingnet tokens out pretty much the same every time. And that's not going to be the same for, for every crisis, right? Uh especially something like Infinity, uh, which if you're kind of playing it how I like to on turn one, turn zero, you want to create options for yourself. Uh, and, and you want to try to be baiting opponents to create shots. Uh, and it really kind of varies on your wing in it uh, deployment. Now, in this instance, there's really the two most important models that I want these tokens on it's going to be number one, Ghost Rider. Number two is Bill. Now, the third uh, choice here, a lot of people might be thinking, you know, uh, Rocket would be appropriate or uh, some of those other things. But you'll kind of see from the way that I do these plays that more than likely, uh, Rocket's not going to be attacking this round. Uh, because it's it's really, this play is about setting up for others. So, we're going to do this for Star-Lord. Now, 
one of the real benefits of having Nebula on your team, and one of the things that I like to create in my Guardians rosters, is I typically like to be five wide. Uh, at a minimum, I like four. At a maximum, six. Uh, and if I had a choice of who my six model would be, it would typically always be Nebula, because she doesn't require or really ever take a wing in it token. The reason I like to be five wide is because throughout the course of the game, there's typically always three good options for winging it token candidates. And there's going to be two that are not, right? You could have uh, one that's out of range or uh, one that's probably about to be dazed or KO'd that you know is not going to be able to activate. Or uh, they just they just aren't like really good for it. Or maybe they're not powered up or uh, any number of things, right? Um or they just, maybe you're bringing like a Winter Soldier, and it's like, well, he's got four dice attacks. You're not always going to get a benefit from it. Or maybe you're five wide with a Nebula, uh, you know, and at that point you've only got four. It just, it you don't always get the greatest amount of candidates. So I typically find that at five wide you get your, your best amount of choices be, be, being able to choose who I really think is going to be able to actually get a maximum uses out of this and, and somebody that I think is for sure uh, going to be able to use this reroll. So uh, starting out on, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, turn one right here for this team. First thing that you want to do, at least for me, is I just want to go here and just set up group, right? And what we're doing is we're taking them there you can see right now that he's currently contesting that. We don't want that, because that's going to get Groot incinerated. So what you can do is just measure off the one, and just make sure that you're just slightly out. Just ever so barely out. Right, so in real life versus like, you know, TTS, because TTS will typically light up. In real life, you want to say, hey, I am placing my Groot, outside of one range he's not contesting that okay just to make sure now it's the same thing in tts except sometimes when you go and do the place out at one it'll light up and sometimes it won't models get nudged ever so slightly and then the uh little light up token of their head goes away you typically always want to just try to continue to announce that uh, it can help you out one of the things that i'll just do in tts just to make sure uh that i'm always good is i always usually, uh, like 90 some percent of the time. So I'll give myself something like that to where I just slightly go back onto it. So that in case there's any sort of somehow board shift or Lord knows what happens with this, that I'm typically always going to be lit up. If you just do the max placement, that's not always going to happen. But again, I'm going to get my one placement out there. And I'm going to be slightly outside of it. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to tell my opponent, I am placing outside of one. So that's your Groot activation. So you could go with Rocket here first, uh, but typically that's going to, you know, uh, if I'm going to have somebody go first and potentially get hit, it's probably going to be Groot. Now, with this team, I think the obvious answer here is, is probably Bucky. He's going to walk up. Uh, let me get power for everybody here. Just just because of habit. Uh, he's going to walk up. Probably grab this. I mean, I would assume. so. And then he's going to set himself up to be in position. Uh, maybe right back here on the absolute forward edge of this. So his base isn't actually sticking out, but the part of his gun is there. So that's actually a legal placement as far as TTS is concerned. And I would consider it legal in real life. So uh, good to go there. All right. Second thing you want to do is Rocket Raccoon. Now here's the real key to what makes this, uh, this play and this roster uh, really sing on this thing, right? It's right here.
Now you can wait to do this later in the round. You can do it earlier. Maybe some models will come up in the center of the board. Uh, and if they do, or if you got an opponent that's not that experienced, fine. Uh, typically, I don't think many people are going to be wanting to walk up in the center of the board when they know Rocket Raccoon is right there. Um, and there's a Ghost Rider and the Star Lord and a Nebuluk. It's just not going to happen early unless they're really inexperienced. Um, and if they are, I mean, it doesn't hurt to actually kind of help your opponent be like, I don't know, that's a good idea. Because that would be uh, extraordinarily dumb. But if it happens, of course, blast away. Uh, but for the most part, that's just not going to be happening. So Rocket is going to spend the one. He's going to grab this book. Now, he 100% wants to be on that point. And what this is really doing for us is that it is backstopping Groot from being able to be pushed backwards. And it's it's going to be really helping him kind of stay uh, right there with Rocket. Now, if he gets pulled in or whatever, that's okay, right? Uh, we can get him back, or there are different ways that we can, we can front stop Groot. We'll see that here in a second. So, I think if uh, it's, it's me, I'm probably now going to be taking advantage of this, uh, this shield move here. Because they may be seen that I didn't have eyes with, uh, with Bill. Again, I'm not necessarily playing this in a way that uh, I'm worried about extract scoring. I just want to make sure that I'm within one. I feel confident that I'm going to win secures. All right. Fury is going to have to, you know, climb over this. If I'm the shield player, I'm probably going to try to see, you know, what's, you know, within one range of the next model that can come up here. Um, is Fury the person that I probably want to, to hold this? I don't actually think so. Um, but I do think that they can get this pretty comfortably uh, uh, a turn later if I come up and start blasting their shield grunts, right? Uh, so if I'm here, I'm probably going to do a similar thing and put Mr. Fury uh, up in a way to where he's not going to get himself incinerated uh, and maybe create an opportunity to where I can kind of help cover the center with his range 3 attacks. So... He might be somewhere more along here. He doesn't quite have the same ability to cover as much as our boy Groot does because of the base size. And you'll, you'll see that actually here with Groot. I'll show you this off. If you've done this correctly, Groot can actually cover anything contesting the uh, center uh, demon point, right? And then some. And then obviously, Rocket's got more than enough of that cover. Okay. So that'll be uh, Fury's activation. I've left that token off to the side there uh, because more than likely they're dropping that this round. Um, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that too quickly. Uh, but I suppose we'll just put it over there for now. Okay. So looking at what my opponent's got left, uh, this is where you kind of want to make the decision of, all right, uh, do I want to go up with Nebula now, start in with the violence, do I want to go in with Ghost Rider now? And when do we bring up Bill? So the idea of when you bring up Bill, it's all matchup dependent, right? Uh, yeah, he's an absolutely tanky model. Uh, he's a real tough guy. Does that mean that we just wanted to have him get blasted to bits by uh, three to four different models uh, before uh, we get into round two? Uh, no, right? So I think we can hold off on that a bit. So, what are our, our other options? We have these mighty appealing looking uh, shield grunts that we can potentially go after. Um, and I think for me, what I'd probably want to do, is we're going to take a look at our range here and say, you know what? All right, I've got that. I'm probably not doing anything else with Star-Lord. But based off where those shield grunts are at, I see that they're within, like, the maximum back distance of range 1 on it. And so, if I can reach that, that means I can reach anything on that. Um, with maybe 
the exclusion of something that's there. I might be slightly out for that. Uh, but just to make sure that I can probably reach the maximum amount, when you do your movement tool, make sure that you place out at the absolute edge of it, which is a legal placement. You don't need to uh, fit your model into the crook there. You can use those extra little tips. So what that should allow me to do with Star-Lord now is cover the whole board. Now I might have screwed our shield grunt friends over on that, which it looks like I did, so they're not going to benefit from cover. However, I don't think they care. Uh, Star-Lord takes a pop. Let's just say that he goes ahead and gets that done. They're going to drop this uh, token, again, a direction of their choosing. This is kind of their turn one safe grab, as it were, uh, to an extent. Probably maybe line it up close to getting onto this truck as possible. Come on. Perfect. Cool. So off they go. Um, gotta check something. I think Fury, does he use ally? Character within it. Regal, run the attack, and defense dies. Gain three power. Alright. So yeah, Fury would get an extra power out of this from those guys getting dumped on. Alright. So anyhow, that's Star-Lord. He's gone up and, uh, dispatched those folks and kind of played right into Shield's hands. If I'm the Shield player, taking myself a probably going to have to double move to get up here. Um, so I'm going to try to get myself on this truck and in a way that gives me cover but not incinerated. So there you go, Black Widow. They're done. So looking at what we've got left, we've got uh, commandos, which are coming in with uh, ranged attacks of four and three and three. Um, Spider Woman, which has three range attacks. Uh, she might be able to reach the center uh, of being able to kind of pop off one on Bill. And Iron Man, which is range four. So is it safe for me to put my bill up there yet? Um, I would argue no. Um, and that's going to kind of hinge on whether or not Spider Woman can reach. Okay. Well, roughly within one there. So, like I said, I don't think our boy Bill is safe. Not entirely. So, what do we want to do? We want to put Nebula in a position to where she can be effective within the next coming rounds. Right? Uh, to where she can kind of just move in and get what she needs to do done. Uh, I don't mind her getting shot at uh, once uh, from one of these models, uh, especially if it's Iron Man. So I kind of want to try to bait that a little bit uh, in a way that I can get her up here and we can kind of just threaten with her. If she just gets dunked on next round, I'm fine with that. Don't want to just give him a double tap though. So maybe we'll just probably go something like this to where I can be within three of Bucky. Not getting ourselves incinerated. So now we're at least, you know, or excuse me, three of Fury. We're at least kind of threatening uh, a model. Uh, he's not contesting anything, but at least we're threatening a model, okay? And so that might be able to get an attack directed into her. Now, what we've done here for S.H.I.E.L.D. is we've kind of given them a, a tough decision to make. Uh, do they want to completely uh, give up the center point, uh, play back uh, that round, 
I mean, that's kind of their prerogative, right? But I can keep the score tied against this shield team just based off what I decide to do here. My goal is to keep things either tied or within kind of one point every round. So if we're tied and we're both scoring three, they're not really going to get their leadership benefits and, and start taking away off uh, on me. So um, looking at things now, you know, opponent probably is going to make the decision to, you know, move a model up. I think if it's going to be somebody that's moving up, you take somebody like a spider woman. try to give her cover she's already counting blanks so this will turn her hits into uh, success as well from that so she's in a really good defensive spot probably not somebody that's going to get messed with so she's going to be done so now she's up there contesting that and she's going to be tough to deal with uh, the beauty of this play is uh, is coming up now so here we got bill coming in and obviously i realize he's on that but i just want to be within one okay and we're going to use this tool. We're going to line it back straight towards Groot. And we're just going to pull him back. Just like that. So like I said, Groot can't really go too far forward now. Right? Um, we'll take out the... Even if he gets pulled in by... by if there's a, a model that has that ability, right? If they're contesting the centerpiece, he's not really going to have too many good angles on anything. There's that one angle right there. And that's basically the only way that he's getting pulled out of anything from that exact angle. But we're going to have that base covered here very shortly. Now you might have wondered, why do I want to put a winged token on Bill? Well, it's because I anticipate he's probably going to get shot this round. Um, so Howling Commandos have nothing to lose as far as shooting at Bill. Typically... If you've got nothing better to do with yourself, that's going to be a good time to attack uh, for any model in the game. I can see them wanting to be out at range 4-ish, right? Uh, so that's fine. If they go and pop into Bill, he is going to have... Uh, so he's within one there. I think he's going to have cover. Uh, so that's... Let's just say that does... I don't know. Uh, one damage on Bill because I wanted it to go through. Uh, so that's going to power up Ghost Rider. Now I've got a Ghost Rider here. He didn't quite get the three power that we're going for. That's fine. You come up with Ghost Rider. And it, then here's, again, the real beauty of a setup like this is that I can take a Ghost Rider, or if I wanted to, I could have played Nebula a lot more aggressively, allowed her to maybe get hit or attacked. And then if Bill gets shot once, or if Nebula gets shot again, and if Nebula gets dazed, who cares? Your two threats getting uh, targeted, that's fine. If that means that I get to do a long move with Ghost Rider and come up and double tap one of your models, it's a trade-off that I'm actually kind of willing to accept. So, Ghost Rider's able to move up just right there. You're going to get an attack on a model if you want to. Now... When you're doing this, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it, but I'm just kind of opting to uh, show you that uh, Ghost Rider is able to come in here and further body block Groot. If you do one damage here, that's going to get you up to your three power, and now you have options to be able to, if you see that there's only one model, right? And I'll just show you here from deployment. Obviously, you can go a lot farther if I wanted to. But if I really wanted to come up here... I get all these options with him, where if I just do, if I get one model that gets attacked and takes one damage, all I need is one damage myself, okay? So again, we can come up here, take the full kind of maximum distance advance. We've got Groot nice and wedged in there. In order for my opponent to come up and, and win that center point, they're going to have to commit a model and double move them. I'm fine with that, because... One of the choices that I get here with Ghost Rider is, again, what really makes this list sing and the sort of problems that it creates for your opponent is what we'll kind of talk about here now. So let's just say that Ghost Rider goes ahead and does that. 
uh, attack into Spider Woman. He's right out at three range, so she's not actually going to get her uh, uh, martial prowess, but she will have cover. Let's just say that he does two damage. I uh, use my wingnut token, and so she gets uh, hexed as well. She's had a bad roll, I guess. I don't know. So Ghost Rider is now on four power. Here's my choices, right? There's only one model on that back point. So I have the option, if I want to, of just rushing that. Or I can just come slightly forward, contest and win the middle, block this person, and I'll show you how I do that. You can just go up here using uh, Hell on Wheels. Can probably block Iron Man by doing something right about like that. Right? Or I can come all the way up here. I should be able to get within one without. There he is. Uh, for anybody that's wondering in uh, TTS, you can have your models kind of skim along the ground if you hold T. So I am right there on the absolute edge of both things. I'm contesting that point. And now with Iron Man, you've got like a... a uh, let me spin my power for my hell on wheels. you got a hell of a choice to make. And what this really does for you is uh, kind of multifold. But it's just the amount of options that this opens up on demons. And the real beauty of it is, as far as this turn one, turn zero, set up and play with guardians, okay? And the whole reason that we're doing this is that he's immune to incinerate. He's immune to incinerate. Rocket isn't. But you're not going to be able to reach Rocket. And even if you do, it's getting bodyguarded onto this guy, Groot. And he's not incinerated anyhow. So you have this turret in the very back point of your line that is incinerated is contesting things but not getting any of the negative effect so you can have a team that has the mobility and the ability to to tank things here and the amount of coverage that you have over this whole part of the board and what you've established if you're an aggressive player or attrition as some people might call it i don't like that term a lot for guardians because attrition to me is outlasting your opponent I'm an aggressive player. I am here to kill my opponents so that they don't outlast me, right? Uh, is that I have created a situation where I have pressured this entire part of the board. I've given myself the option of going all the way to that back point because they don't have the same advantage of having uh, models that are immune to incinerate as I do, and they're trying to avoid having that happen to too many characters at once, right? They don't want to have these models come up and get incinerated. If they do... You know, they're going to want to have it be on a model that they think is safe in the back, like Bucky. Or is tough, like Spider-Woman, and has great defense, right? So, you know, they're going to avoid that. A lot of teams are going to avoid this. And, you know, if you're Iron Man, what do you do, right? Do I want to uh, contest that back point? Uh, do I want to just try to double tap into Ghost Rider? You know, while he's technically going to have cover because he's behind that range three. Um, or do I come up and, and, and contest this point? Now, if this isn't shield, they'd probably be a lot more likely to just walk up there and be like, you know, take the incinerate and then try to make an attack from there. Uh, shield might just double tap, right? So because this is shield, you know, the other option of what I was talking about is you can just opt to win this, okay? And... Uh, you can still absolutely uh, threaten this other team. Or you can save that power, right? You can sit here and you can basically create the same sort of trap that you created for Iron Man on this back point as you can here. Some people might be wanting to be fairly aggressive and take that VP. It's a trap. Because you're going to have this Ghost Rider next turn. And you can literally just pop right up in here. 
using hell on wheels, get an attack off, and then maybe a beam, right? This guy loves this crisis. But if you're back here, fine. What I would probably do against shield is what you'll see right here. I'm going to try to make my best attempt at body blocking Iron Man from being able to get on this point. So we can kind of leave him in a rock in a hard place. And I'm going to want to do it with a way that I can put my model in a position to where they're really well uh, kind of back stopped using Spider Woman there. So that Iron Man can't push me off the point if he comes forward. So, if I've done this correctly, which it doesn't look like it matters much if I, I that I have, Iron Man can walk up. He can still get there, no problem. But look at the position he's got to be in. I don't know that most opponents are going to do that, especially if it's going to result in their, their person getting uh, incinerated just for one VP. So you're, you're looking at another situation where you're probably going to have an opponent just opt to be here. He can't push me off that. You're scoring your VP. So, again, this overlapping field of fire. All these things that you got going for yourself, you're really just trying to win that center secure and then use, you know, your really durable or your throwaway models uh, like a Nebula or, let's be honest, Ghost Rider. Uh just highly aggressively into your opponents. And if you're able, with an aggressive team that hits as hard as his Guardians does, or as hard as this list does, and you're able to maintain uh, equal to slightly down in scoring, any opponent in the game is going to have a very hard time. So, as far as the tactics cards and why we take what we did here, okay, uh, Rocket's not going to have any problem getting up to two power next turn. Deadly Duo is going to be online. You can choose to clear up this car to basically get rid of any cover for people uh, next turn with Bill before Deadly Duo. The real key to what makes this, again, sing though, is deal with the devil. And it has everything to do with the way that these two uh, synergize extremely well with Ghost Rider. Any team in the game is going to have a very difficult time at breaking into that that kind of core back there and getting into Rocket. You have to either throw Groot uh, back towards his own team. Uh, and when I say his own team, the opponent's going to have to throw them towards their team. Uh, so to the, I guess, north or towards my opponent's board edge. Or they're going to have to pull him. Those are your only two options as far as kind of really displacing where maybe you've got that Mystic Advance or a Cosmic Portal or something. I don't know. I guess there's a lot of options. But... That's what it's going to have to be. And more than likely, it's going to be either short or range to uh, all things that Groot can kind of recover from. Again, there are a lot of ways to body block that. Uh, you could bring in Dominable, but when some model has to come up there, they're going to have to really commit, even if it's a range 4 cosmic portal type ability. They're going to really have to commit to coming up there. And I just don't think that it's safe to do. And so you get Groot sitting back there, and he might take some shots. That's fine. But, you know, if I do any more of these videos, this is something that you guys have liked. You're going to hear me say this a lot. Once I get off Deadly Duo with the Rocket or Groot, I think they're both equally expendable. And it kind of just depends on what's going on with board state. Um, or what they're looking at, like, health-wise or uh, other things like that, or what the crisis is, right? Uh, but being able to have a Ghost Rider in your team that essentially has 30 hit points um, and is going to have an opportunity to activate twice in a round after clearing off special conditions or anything else that's going on and being able to keep their Winging It token, uh, I think he's just completely nasty on this. There's the entire Wicked Judgment bubble, right? And again... Because you're able to stay close on the extract scoring, pretty much regardless of what extract you're playing on, it doesn't matter. Because of the way that this is set up, you're, you're going to be able to be within one on pretty much any extract if you play like this. 
you're going to have Star-Lord basically able to operate with impunity in kind of this free offset zone to where he can just, you know, plink in shots, do whatever. You've got this extraordinary threat over here. She's just a load, right? And then you've got Ghost Rider right in their face. And then the entire time you got Bill and Rocket giving you your, your you know, two to three points a turn guaranteed. It's a nasty setup. I, I think this is what makes this absolutely hands down the best crisis for guardians now i talked about there being a, a different setup for this this involves cosmic ghost rider you take out the same thing the core concept and the core setup for rocket and groot the activation order all that stuff it's the same you put rocket and groot right in the center of the board except now instead of having bill who i think's great and probably somebody that you should be wanting to have in this you've got Cosmic Ghost Rider. And you put him in there with Ghost Rider. And so that's your 19 squad. That's a little bit different. There's an 18 version, uh, which is going to involve a Cosmic Ghost Rider. That's Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, uh, Bill, and Cosmic. Uh, I think that's pretty good. I still prefer the, the classic Ghost Rider, uh, which is why you'll see at 17, I just take Nebula off of this. Um... I have made this out to be like my, my first kind of uh, strategy video because honestly, there's very few lists that can deal with this. Even if they know it's coming, I don't think it matters. It's sort of the same thing as, as what I mentioned about some of these other affiliations that can really do amazing stuff uh, on certain crises. It almost doesn't matter what you can do. Um, so... Uh, be really interested to see your guys' feedback. I'm going to get this uploaded over to my YouTube, share from there. Um, I do plan on doing a few more of these uh, related to a couple of my crises. Uh, there's some really interesting things that are a little bit more high level uh, and maybe not as standardized. You can do a little bit trickier uh, on intrusions uh, and uh, Infinity in particular. Uh, and involving some different models, like uh, somebody that I'm a huge fan of on uh, Infinity, uh, for example, is Agent Venom. And hopefully, uh, if there's something that you guys like, uh, we can kind of keep this series going. I'm going to try to keep it Guardians of the Galaxy related. I'll probably try to keep these a little bit somewhat short in nature. Hopefully, this has been uh, helpful for anybody that sees it. If you guys have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns, feel free to hit me up on Discord. Obviously, you can leave a comment here on the, uh, the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I'll be around. Um, and yeah, so uh, again, if anybody found this helpful, just let me know. All right. Cheers, folks. Take care.